back in 2005, 2006-ish, I created a video to assist and aid people in learning the audio video booth or media booth at First Baptist Church of Plymouth, Indiana. Uh, taking some inspiration from Peter Jackson's Return of the King, the audio video booth video had more than a fair share of endings to it. So uh, here's that video. Uh, go ahead and enjoy it. Hello, welcome to the First Baptist Church audio video booth, the technological backbone ministry of our church. This ministry provides our church with the technology-based resources that enhance our services, ministries, and many of the other events that take place here at First Baptist. The audio video booth is responsible for the mixing of powered sound, playing CDs, DVDs, VHS tapes, and computer videos. We coordinate the PowerPoint presentation for the services, business meetings, and a lot of the other events. We record the services for those that may want to view them later, and we supply the video feed to the nursery downstairs. This video will hopefully help you understand much of what happens in the audio video booth and educate you to what this ministry does for First Baptist Church of Plymouth. The first thing we're going to look at is setting up the video recording for those that might want to watch these sermons later on VHS. First, you start by setting up the tripod by expanding its legs out and tightening the knob so that it doesn't collapse back on itself. Then, when you've got the tripod positioned over the monitor, you extend its legs out and lock them into place. Some of them are kind of stiff. Once you've got the legs extended outward, the tripod may be tilted back some. You can tell here that it is tilted back a little, so we're going to loosen up this front knob and slide it forward until this is standing upward. And we're going to try not to hit this monitor or rely too much on having it set upon the monitor. Once we get the tripod set up. Then we grab the video camera This is the video camera we're using right now. One of the first things you want to make sure of is that the lens cap is off and that this little side panel is open because we're going to be piping the audio video out of this video camera into a VHS recorder. Well, the video is going to be piped out. The audio we don't use. You sit the video camera in the tripod while pulling back this little lever, set it down level, and then you push this little lever forward and that should lock the video camera into place. Now the tripod has two axes that I know of. It might have three, I'm not sure. But that I know of, it has two axes. It has an up and down motion, which is controlled by this longer bar, and it's got a side to side motion, which tension is controlled by this knob. The tighter you make this, the harder it is to turn left to right. The looser you make it, the easier it is to turn left and right. Now that we've got this set up, I'm going to go ahead and grab the power plug that goes into it. This is the power plug for this particular video camera. If we're not using this video camera at the time, you'll have to figure out what video plug-in to use and where. One of the ways to do this, in order not to get the cord to come down in front of the video monitor, since whoever's going to be doing the videotaping doesn't want something in front of them while they're doing the video recording, you want to actually sift it through the side here 
so that it doesn't go straight in front of the monitor. Then you plug in the other end of the cord to the little video box, at least on this video camera, and then we plug it in. Now, once we have the video plug, once we have the power plugged into our video camera, then you'll want to take your audio video cable. If you remember correctly, we open this little side panel over here. You're looking for the the uh, the jack plug-in labeled AV out. You plug that in, and so that this doesn't go in front of the video camera, camera, you actually work it right on the other side of the video camera in between the leg and the video camera. We take the yellow video out cable and we plug it into the video input channel. Actually it's the composite video is I believe it's technical term. We plug it into the composite video in on the VHS video cassette recorder labeled recording. There's two VHS recorders here. There's one labeled recording and one labeled playing. You want to make sure that you plug the yellow cable from the video out of the video camera into the video of the one labeled recording. The audio for the VHS recorder actually comes from the output of the power amp, so you don't have to worry about plugging in either of the audio channels. You just leave the, uh, there should be a black cable plugged into the audio. If there isn't, it actually comes from the power amp again. So if you're not too sure where it's, it, it, it's usually a black wire hanging around. Now there is another black wire that goes into this video monitor. You want to make sure that it's actually the audio cable that comes out of the amp. Once you've plugged in your video signal into the VHS recorder, you can go ahead, open up your video camera LCD display and select camera on the video camera. Another good thing to do at this time is to extend the video camera until you have a shot of the pulpit up front. This is how I level it. What I'll do to make sure that this is level, I'll get a shot of the pulpit and put the brim of the pulpit right on the verge of the LCD display. Since that's on the verge of it, I can see where I need to lower where I need to raise it. It needs to be raised just a little bit on this side. It doesn't look like it's going that way. Now I know my image is level because I'm now level with the level of the pulpit. So if the pulpit's uneven, I'm uneven. If the pulpit's straight, I'm straight. Now that we got our video camera straight, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop in a video cassette tape into the VHS recorder. Usually when you pop the tape in, as long as the power is on, the video tape recorder, the VHS recorder will power on automatically. One of the first things you want to do when you stick it in is you want to hit the menu button a couple of times until you come up to a blank screen. 
The reason this is, is because it automatically comes up into the menu because we always turn off all the power back here in the audio video booth. So it always comes up wanting to scroll through auto channels again, and it wants to select the language again. You just keep hitting menu until you see a blank screen. Once you see that blank screen, you can turn it to channel two, and when you do, you should have the video that you were looking at in the LCD of your monitor or of your camcorder. And all you really have left to do is when the pastor comes up or when whoever comes up and needs to start speaking, you need to hit the record button here on the VHS recorder and you need to hit the record button on the video camera as well or else the video camera will shut down after about five minutes. <sighs> and that's about all you have for setting up the video camera to record things while you're here at First Baptist Church. The VHS player labeled recording. And the VHS player labeled playing. This one is used in conjunction with this button. When you push this, it makes the play VHS recorder become active. And now you can play these out onto the overhead camera. This switch selection box also allows you to select the DVD, Now it's time to take a look at our mixer board. This is the First Baptist Church mixer board. This is used for the mixing of powered sound, CDs, DVDs, VHS tapes, and any other type of sound that is produced up on the stage. And some sounds that even aren't. Uh, it's a 16 channel mixer board non-powered. It uses the first eight channels as individual and then the last four channels are stereo. These are the first eight, these are the last four. It's got a four band graphic equalizer on, with the four blue colored knobs. Uh, pots or is what they're actually called, the four blue pots. It's got a gain control up at front. It's got a line in low cut to high cut. It's got both balanced and unbalanced. These can be both balanced and unbalanced jacks and you've got your balanced jacks. It's got a mute, a pan selection, an FX switch and a monitor selection. This is actually our auxiliary send uh, labeled as monitor. All your monitors are, lab are for your auxiliary send. It's got a sub main and a main and then individual sl side selections. You can solo an individual track and you can select whether you want to cut it from the sub or add it to it or cut it from the main or add it to it. You also have a mute selection. Okay, it starts with we have the podium at the far left hand side. First we need to raise our mains up to a decent volume and then we can raise the volume on our sliding pot and a lot of times this is a good time to raise the volume on our monitor since since we already have the volume raised up on our auxiliary send, which is our output, which is our monitor output right now. But yeah, here's the podium. We've just raised the volume. When you raise the volume of the podium, when you raise the volume of the podium, you raise the volume of this microphone right here. Now that we're done with the podium microphone, we can go ahead and turn off the monitor for it and we can slide down the podium pot. 
Now the blue mic, which is on the right hand side, often the one used by Jeremy during the singing of the services, we can raise this and turn up the monitor on this one. When we raise the value slide on the blue microphone, we obviously get amplification out of the blue mic. And now that you've seen where the blue mic is at, we can go ahead and lower the volume on it and lower the volume on the monitor for it. Then we can raise the volume for the red mic and raise its monitor. Again, when you raise the volume on the red mic, if you'll notice, it's got a little red piece of tape on it, which indicates it's the red mic. This is the one to raise. Someone asked to raise the value on the red mic. And now that we're finished using the red mic, we can go ahead and lower it and turn its monitor down. We also have a yellow mic, which we use. This mic is sitting directly in front of the pianos. Although it's difficult to see, the piano mic is used to raise and lower the volume of the the power of the volume of the pianos so any time it seems as though the pia the the surrounding music is cutting out the pianos you can raise the yellow mic to increase the amount of amplification to the sound of the pianos well the piano or the organ we also have the wireless mic which is this handheld mic right here As well, we have the wireless lapel that Pastor wears, and we have an extra. We've got the CD here, so if someone wants to play a song in the CD player, we've got the DVD player for when people want to play DVDs. The audio level for the DVD player is here, as well as its monitor control and the tape which this one at the moment is currently plugged into the computer. We have sub-mains, but we don't have a sub-main output to anything. We used to have the monitors on the sub-main, but we cut that and put them on the auxiliary send. Another thing to note, is if you want to blend music in, like let's say you want to go ahead and add a chorus sound to who's ever singing on the red mic while they're playing or while they're using the CD. If they're playing on the CD, you would crank up the CD, the monitor, and you would go ahead and uh, add volume to the auxiliary send one then you would raise the FX, which is the auxiliary sin 3. And then on, let's say they were singing on the red mic, you'd raise the red mic and then raise the effects on the auxiliary sin 3 and the monitor. Because the, the, uh, the effects which go through the auxiliary send don't actually go out to the monitor, they go into the main. So that if you had cut out the main, you wouldn't hear the effects. But if you cut out their monitor, if the red mic was being, they were hearing the monitor, the monitors are the little bitty speakers that sit next to the stage and they allow the people on stage to help hear what they're singing. This here is one of the monitor speakers. These speakers help the people up on stage hear what they're singing while they're singing it. Without these monitor speakers, it's difficult for the singers to orient themselves as to what they're singing and how loud and how well it's mixed together. These speakers should give the singers and should be set for the singers to, a comfort, to accommodate them for how well they hear the music and how well they're singing to it. Again. This is the First Baptist Church soundboard. It does take some time to get to know how to get comfortable in using it. 
There are also a couple of other things, like up here are the main gains. These are something like the volume pots down here, but they're much more intensive. Turning these just a little bit causes the gain to increase that comes into the mixer board. There's a lot of things to learn on the mixer board. One of the best places to start is with the manual. So if you ever decide to sit behind this mixer board to decide to mix sound, try to get comfortable in reading the manual to get a better idea of how to use it. Another part of the arsenal at the First Baptist Church audio video booth is the CD player. This is a five disc CD CD player capable of handling up to five discs at a time for playing CDs. Well, not at a time, but five. you can place five discs within the trays. The labels are right next to the CD. I don't know if you can tell it on, the, on this video, but each one has a label to it. This is CD3 and their CD2. The five disc CD CD player can be programmed for a use so if someone wants to put them all in, program it, and then walk away, they can. But it would have to be played in succinctive order. There wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to, I don't believe you can program pauses into it. Next to the CD player is a DVD player. It's a standard Sanyo DVD player, which has its video output normally up on the video screen. And lastly, our latest addition to the First Baptist Church audio video booth is our audio video computer, or our media computer. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to get into the actual use of it since this is an actual CRT screen and CRT screens flicker when recorded really bad. Uh, perhaps if I bring in my LCD screen, we can hook it up and I can give you a, a tutorial going through the media computer for First Baptist Church using my LCD screen since it wouldn't flicker the same way that this does on a video camera. Well, now that you've got a taste of the First Baptist Church audio video booth, it might give you some appreciation as to what goes on back here and what it takes to function back here. And if it sounds like a ministry you're interested in, let me or the pastor or anybody else who uses or utilizes the audio video booth know and perhaps we can help teach you the ropes. I gotta lose some weight Ugh, or stand taller or straighter. Uh, Why didn't anybody tell me I was so fat? Man. And remember, just because you're back here in the audio video booth doesn't mean you get out of singing during the worship services. Me and Eric sing while we're running this. Eric even sings while he's running the mixing board and running the PowerPoint presentations. He's using left hand, right hand, and mouth. Multitasking. Eric's pretty good at it. If we could, I'd move the, <laughs> I'd move the computer over here so Eric wouldn't have to worry about running both at the same time. We've even talked about trying to get the computer over here so, while I'm running the video camera, I can also run the computer, but it hasn't worked out that way yet. So, maybe in the future. Well, that's pretty much what goes on back here in the audio video booth. We run the audio for the sound, we run the video for the overhead projector, we do the recordings. And we pretty much any of the technological based things back here. 
Or do we call this the media booth? This might be called the media booth. <laughs> Is it too late to start calling it the media booth? Because I'd really like to start calling it the media booth. Why do I even still have this monitor on? I need to turn off lights, is what I need to do. I'm sucking up power from First Baptist, and they're going to send me a bill. start working out <laughs> and one of the worst things people have to live back here with is my gas <laughs> I am constantly farting I mean if that doesn't scare you away from this ministry I don't know what will see I think Eric farts too but he's always sitting on this little bitty pew right here here take a look see this See this little pew right here that we've got the video camera bags on and the the other tripod on? I see Eric's always sitting on this thing while he's running the soundboard. Okay. So when Eric breaks wind, no one ever hears it. He's always sitting down. There's no hiding my gas. Well, I do hope that you've enjoyed this little tour of the audio video booth. Peace! Got nothing but love for ya! Hard to believe the Lord's watching this right now, you know it? I gotta turn this thing off. This cannon light that I got behind me? Man, I'm gonna have like retinal damage for days. Just so you don't see an all shadowy looking face. Yeah. See, this is what it looks like without that stupid cannon light that I got from my mom and dad's house. That thing's a crowd blinder. I mean, you imagine what the video would have looked like if I was sitting there doing one of these numbers all shadowy all over my face? And you couldn't tell what I was saying to you? Uh-uh. Forget that. Through here. Through here. It's good to have Eric back here, though. The boy is multi talented. And half the time, since I've got a Sunday school lesson to prepare, He's on top of all of this back here. Actually, I don't really spend a whole lot of time preparing my Sunday school lessons. I just wait for God to give it to me while I'm standing up there. I mean, yeah, I read chapters and I try to get an idea of what I'm going to be talking about that day. I don't sit there and do like in-depth study. I just come up with a couple of verses and meditate. I use the leading of the Holy Spirit, I guess is the way they call it. At least I think that's what they call it. That might be what it is. You'd have to ask the Lord. You know, it would be really nice if I can make this whole thing computer driven. I'd be in love. There's not a whole lot left to do or wrap up. I just gotta turn the power off and fix up this camera. I got everything else pretty much. Well, I suppose that's it. I'll talk to you later.